What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Brandon from Walker's Woodworks. Today we're going to be making a mobile kitchen cart. My sister asked me to make her something that she could store things on in the kitchen such as mixers and crock pots and things like that, but it had to be mobile so they could move it out of the way. She also likes a really rustic and industrial design so I decided to use some 8 quarter knotty alder which I'm cutting down to length at the miter saw here and I'll be using some black pipe as well for the frame. Once the boards were cut to length at the miter saw, I took them over to the table saw to rip them to width. I buy most of my lumber in S3S, which stands for surfaced on three sides. This means it only has one rough edge, so you can trim it to the width you'd like. For a rough glue up, I just trim that edge down and get my final width, and then I can trim the ends later. When doing a glue up I always like to lay down some paper so I don't get glue all over my assembly table and you can get these in big rolls at a home store for fairly cheap. I had three shelves to glue up so I laid out and taped up my clamps to keep them clean. It's much easier than scraping off the glue later. I typically use biscuits when doing glue ups but these were not very big and the boards were pretty flat so I didn't really feel that I needed them for the alignment this time. I always make sure to use plenty of glue and get it evenly spread in the joints. Also when doing glue ups for panels or tops or shelves or anything like that, I always make sure to alternate the grain pattern. This helps with keeping it flat. If you would like to know more info on glue ups for tops or desktops or anything like that, I did a video on just that and I will link it below for you guys. Another tip I learned along the way is to scrape off the glue before it dries completely, at least off the top. It's much better than sanding or scraping it off once it's cured. After the glue was dry, I took all the shelves out of the clamps. Here you see why I try to get the glue off before it dries. I apparently forgot one. After I had all the glue scraped off, I grabbed my orbital sander and flattened everything out with 80 grit. After I had it all flattened, I grabbed some masking tape and taped off any of the knots and voids from the underside of the shelves. These will be filled with epoxy. I always like to use a low viscosity resin for this because it's a lot thinner and it flows down into the cracks and knots much better. You may have to do this process a couple times before they're all the way full because the resin tends to sink down overnight. Once the resin is fully cured I can go back with the orbital sander and 80 grit and sand down the epoxy to be flush with the top. Be sure not to sand too long in one spot though because the resin will get hot and start to melt and gum up the paper. I do this to the tops of the shelves because it will make it nice and smooth but also give it that rustic look that she was wanting. Once I had it all flattened back out I could flip it over and remove the tape. On to my least favorite part, the black pipe. Luckily most home stores will actually let you buy 20 foot sections and then cut it and thread it for you. I went with one inch pipe for this project. I also got some double locking casters so these won't spin or roll. All the pipes and fittings will have oil on them to protect them from rusting. To clean this off I use acetone. It is important to get all of the oil off so the paste wax finish will adhere to the metal. Once everything was clean I could start assembling the base, just getting everything hand tied at first. Make sure you wear gloves also because some of the threads are pretty sharp. I will have build plans available for this project that include detailed cut lists, measurements, pipe sizes, and step by step instructions for you guys so you can build one of these for yourself. Check the link in the description below and I will also list all the tools I use in the video as always for you guys. 
Anytime I use black pipe, doing the assembly always makes me think of playing with Legos as a kid or Lincoln Logs or even those Kinect things. Do you guys remember those? Or am I just getting old? So I want to stop real quick right here and kind of talk about changing things as you go. Almost every project, unless it's real simple, I mean, this is pretty simple too, but really, really simple and I've built it before and stuff like that. A lot of times along the way, I'll change things as I'm going to do right now. My original plan was to have the bottom shelf and then the top shelf the same size and then this middle one, the width of this, but it's only going to be 10 and 3 eighths, 10 and a half, something like that. So it'll be for mixers and stuff and that's really not that much room. So I think what I'm going to do is notch out around these so that way I can make them the same width or maybe a little less wide than the top and the bottom, but it'll give me a lot more, a lot more room to put things and also still stay with the same look. So it'll be just, just a notch here, notch here, kind of wrap around the legs rather than just be between them. I think that'll be a lot better look and it'll be a lot more um, useful, I guess you could say. So back to the build. So in the beginning, I just made all three shelves the same size to make it easier, but now I need to cut the middle shelf down to the right width. But rather than take all of it off of one side, I split the difference and cut a little bit off of each edge to make it more uniform. Clearly need a new table saw blade. See those burn marks? To trim down the ends, I put one of my favorite tools in the shop to use, my track saw. If you don't have a track saw though, you could always use a circular saw with a guide. Works just fine. Then it was time to cut those notches I was talking about. I just measured and marked with a ruler and a square where I needed to cut them and then took them over to the bandsaw. If you don't have a bandsaw, a jigsaw would work just as well. After I had that all set up, I cut the other shelf to length and I could start sanding. Make sure when you're sanding edges or ends, you keep the sander straight. Otherwise, you could end up with a beveled edge. Ask me how I know. I grabbed my palm router and went around all of the top edges with an eighth inch roundover bit. This particular one is a white side bit from Bits and Bits Company with their Astra coating, and they actually gave me a code to share with you guys. So if you want to use the code WALKER15 at checkout on their website, you will get 15% off your order. Check the link below. So my sister wanted an outlet in the top of this cart. I found one on Amazon that would work well, marked out where I wanted it, and cut the hole with a hole saw. I could have used a jigsaw to cut it, but I'm not that confident in my circle cutting skills, and hole saws are always just fun to use. The wood was too thick, so I had to drill in from one side and then go in from the other to complete it. It was a perfect fit, although I don't think that ethernet plug will be used much. As always, I like to mark my work, so I use my branding iron from Gearhard Industry, and they have also given me a coupon code for you guys. 10% off your first custom brand. Check for that link below as well. I would say I use Rubio on 80% of my projects in the shop nowadays. It's just really easy to apply and looks awesome. Also, the hardening oil and wax blend provides great protection against water and normal wear and tear. Basically, you just spread it out and then buff it in, and you're done. They don't sponsor me or anything. I just really like this product. I went over the whole frame again one last time with some acetone just to make sure it was free of dust and oil. I have used a clear spray enamel before, but for something that's not going to be in a human room like a bathroom, I think that the paste wax actually works really well and gives it a flat sheen to kind of go with that rustic industrial look. To apply it, all you have to do is wipe some on, wait a few minutes, and then kind of buff it out. Once that was done, I could start assembling. I started with it upside down, making sure the flanges were all sitting flat. Then I made sure it was centered before securing it to the top. I pre-drilled all the holes using tape as a depth gauge on my drill bit and started the screws with an impact. And then I always finish off sinking them in by hand just to make sure they don't strip.
Then I can mark where I wanted the casters to go and I used a center punch for this. I used cap head screws and some washers to attach them to the bottom of the shelf. After they were attached, I locked them in place and then I could flip the top half over onto the bottom shelf so I could get that secured the same way. Again, adjusting the pipes as needed to make sure it was level. I actually didn't get it on film somehow, but I attached the middle shelf to that crossbar with some one inch two hole straps. Adding the outlet was the last step. There is a detachable cord that hooks to the bottom of the outlet, by the way, if you were curious on how I was getting power to it. With that, the cart was finished. Don't forget, if you guys want to build one of these yourself, I do have plans available in the description below. I always appreciate you guys watching and your support. For more projects, check out that video up in the corner. Thanks again, and I will see you guys on the next one.